Hey guys, it's Brian from Howard Algae Works. I just got finished with the Asian Oceania Congress on Neuroradiology. We had a 20 minute invited talk there. So I'm gonna give part two of that talk. They were nice enough to allow us to put this on the web. And this is gonna be part two of that talk, talking about deep learning and kind of the basics behind deep learning, the motivation for deep learning in comparison with iterative reconstruction. That's coming up here at Howard Eology Works. If that kind of information sounds good to you, you'd like to know more about how Eology Works, click below on subscribe and click on the little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. Next in the outline, we'll come to talk about the FBP versus iterative reconstruction versus some unknown that's gonna be coming. So filtered back projection in the history, this is GE's history, but it's similar throughout the industry. In the early 1970s, filtered back projection became the standard because it's fast and it gives you good results if you have reasonable dose, relatively high dose data. If you don't have high dose data, filtered back projection does not have a way to inherently reduce noise other than to have a different filter kernel, which will smooth the image. So in the case of lower dose data, the results are not as good with filtered back projection. And this is what ushered in the era of iterative reconstruction, because in iterative reconstruction, you can build in what's called image regularization or a way to denoise the data. So then at lower doses, you can achieve good image quality. And that era came in in 2008, starting with ACER, Adaptive Statistical Iterative Reconstruction. Shortly thereafter, GE also introduced VEA, which is a full model-based iterative reconstruction. And in this case, we're talking about the reconstruction speed as a function of the CNR. So what we're talking about is if the dose is reduced, the noise in the images is going to go up, right? So the algorithm can help us to compensate for that. And the full model-based area of reconstructions could help have the most improvement in the contrast to noise, but it was at the penalty of significant increase in recon time. What we're looking for here is a few years ago, we sat down and said, is there some technology that could help us generate images with that significant CNR boost? but also be done relatively quickly so the images can be generated while the patient is still on the scanner or shortly thereafter. Additionally, image quality is also of concern and there were some concerns with the iterative reconstructions as far as the texture in the images. So the texture in the images is a little bit more plasticky in some of the iterative reconstruction as a result of the regularization procedure that's used. And so what we're looking for here as well is, can we achieve that improvement in contrast to noise ratio while having the texture of filtered back projection? Is there a technology we were asking ourselves about three or four years ago? And it turns out that that technology is deep learning image reconstruction. Deep learning, is a subset of machine learning, which is then a subset of artificial intelligence. And the really big breakthrough of deep learning is that we don't have to hand tune different filters and such, but rather the learning can happen and the network itself can learn the features inherently without being taught those features that are important in the image. This is a general plot. It's not specific to CT at, at all, but just as far as deep learning in general, if we can well train a network that uses more parameters, that network will typically outperform the conventional algorithms, which use fewer algorithms, fewer parameters rather. And the example is the iterative reconstruction algorithms use on the order of 10 to 100 parameters. And then the deep learning algorithms use on the order of a million parameters allowing us to model the relationship between the noise in the image and better in our CT images. So if we looked at the same plot, we're now filling in the question marks in that bubble with our deep learning image reconstruction. That applies for both the recon speed 
and the image texture in the image. So you can see here, if you look at the progression in images, don't worry, I'm gonna show you some more brain images soon. But if you look at the progression in the images, you can see there's significant improvement in the deep learning image reconstruction images as far as the contrast to noise and the image texture. So we're calling 2018 until the next technology is invented, the era of deep learning image reconstruction. The steps in order to generate a deep learning algorithm are to come up with a network architecture to train that and to verify it. We're gonna focus here on the training. And the training, we can use both phantom data as well as data which is acquired from routine CT acquisitions without any additional dose to the patient. But that data which was acquired using higher doses is then used in the training. And this is what we're calling a high dose filtered back projection. That is the key to the training within the GE philosophy here. We earlier tried different training methodologies, but this one was the one that allowed us to have the match of image texture in comparison with other technologies. So the idea is we take the high dose filtered back projection image, and we're trying to come up with a network which is gonna be able to take the raw data, we'll perform our image reconstruction and denoising, and then try and estimate the mapping which is going to go from that raw data to the high dose filtered back projection data. And the subject of back propagation is how we estimate all the parameters within our network by trying to perform tweaks in the network. So the, the values of the weights between the different nodes in the network, try and perform tweaks in there such that we will get an image from our noisy data, which better resembles the high dose data. You can see here, the idea is we wanna have an image in the difference, which is relatively free of structure and contains mostly the noise. What we're trying to do is estimate the noise in the CT image. This is what's called supervised learning because we supervise the learning process and we perform the learning just in the factory. Once the networks are learned, they are then saved after image quality reviews with the engineers, with application specialists, with radiologists. Those networks are then saved and used in the field. They can be used either on the cloud or on the console. But the idea is that these networks at this state are not learning in the field. They are being applied in the field.